May I tell you that the 2014 trip to the soup kitchens in Chimbote, Peru was just simply wonderful. And what a great group of missionaries I had with me. Dr. David Pinkard from Cleveland, Tennessee. Pastor's wife, Rhonda Brewer from the Wagram Church of God in North Carolina, along with her sister, Danielle Baker from Tennessee. Also from Wagram, retired school teacher, Glenda Brown, and her daughter, nursing supervisor, Danielle Moore. From my old hometown of Oak Grove, Louisiana, business lady, Sybil Brumley. A retired TVA supervisor and race car driver, Debbie Singleton of Knoxville, Tennessee. An outstanding pastor by the name of Greg Causey of the Eastmore Church of God, Knoxville, Tennessee. I had four from a Hispanic church in Charlottesville, Virginia, James Bells and Andy Hollis along with Austin Hubbard and his dad, Pastor Rich Hubbard, who unfortunately lost his heart to the wonderful youth of Chimbote. Rich is working toward bringing one of the teenagers to the States at his expense to go to school. He will never ever be the same. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. This was a great team. People who do Christmas with the kids do make a difference. I had an unusually moving experience on this trip with a lady who gave a very passionate testimony about the kindness of Tiffany Mullins. Tiffany was with me for Christmas in Chimbote several years ago. She felt the Lord speaking to her heart about this woman's needs. She talked to her daughter about it and her daughter felt the same way. Tiffany slipped an offering into an envelope and gave it to the lady. This lady still had the envelope in her Bible. She keeps it to remind her of God's hand of provision. She was a single mom, broke, no money for food or electricity. She was seemingly without hope. But God sent Tiffany with a love offering, which pulled her through the crisis. You, like the people on this trip, can make a difference. The first order of business on Wednesday morning was, of course, shopping. We did Casa de Esperanza on Wednesday, La Deris del Sur on Thursday, and Campo Nuevo on Friday. Several of the people from Virginia spoke Spanish, so they were very helpful in buying the clothes for the kids. On Wednesday afternoon, we did all of the treat bags. I asked Reverend Hubbard to organize this activity and he did a great job. We filled the bags with candy, apples, oranges, toys, soap, toothpaste, toothbrushes. Well, you get the picture. The treat bags were fantastic. At night, we would go to one of the soup kitchens to have service with them. After the service, we would have a meal with the kids, and last but not least, we presented all the goodies, clothes, shoes, treat bags, and school supplies. Sybil Brumley provided special handmade dolls for the girls. On Sunday morning before I left for this trip, Pastor Wiles called me to say that a man in his church had raised money for each child at Casa de Esperanza to have a shiny, brand new bicycle. Can you believe it? Dr. Pinkard did the presentation. The kids said, this can't be real. I must be dreaming. Have you ever seen kids go into orbit? But that's not all. This gift spoke to the community. This little soup kitchen made its mark that night. One dad who had never prayed before came to church and prayed because he was so moved by this gift of love. After the service, we gave them a wonderful feast of delicious chicken, rotisseried over an open wood fire, salad, potatoes, cake, ice cream, and soda pop. The gifts, treats, and food were wonderful, but the services in the first two soup kitchens were just not what I was hoping for. I just didn't understand what was wrong. It was like a revival where you seemed to be waiting for what us old timers called a breakthrough, a time when the Spirit of the Lord comes down and touches the people. That just did not happen in the first two soup kitchens and only to a limited amount in the third one. Little did I know what God had in store for us. As the week progressed, I became more and more concerned. The preachers were preaching. The praise and worship people were leading. It just wasn't working. And then through the fog of confusion, doubts and frustrations, I heard from God right on time. God spoke to my heart Friday night and told me to bring all three soup kitchens together Saturday morning for a time of worship. It would cost extra money to hire a bus, but God had blessed this trip 
with plenty of money. After God spoke to me, I was sitting on the bus by Greg for the ride back to the hotel and he looked over at me and said, I got the message. I know what God wants me to tell them. I knew it was going to work. I could hardly wait until Saturday. Saturday morning, Greg stepped up to the podium and said, there are thousands of children here who need food and clothes, but God himself has chosen you to grow strong in the Lord. He is providing these blessings for you because he has chosen you to do his work. When they heard these words, their hearts turned to God and the Holy Ghost fell in that little room with a dirt floor and the rest is history. They praised God with tears streaming down their little cheeks. They danced before the Lord. They weren't just kids from the ghetto, kids with no daddy, no clothes, no hope. Now they are on a mission from God. I have no doubt that lives were eternally changed that day. Only time will reveal the wonderful things that were accomplished in this service. I can say no more except to say to God be the glory and the honor and the praise for it all. Thank all of you who supported this work. You are the hands of God to make it happen. Thank you.